Pants. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tan Pants. We're back and we're yep. here. And we're better than ever. We're better our, than ever. On our old yep. new studio location. If you zoom on any of the cameras, you will see the damage, the holes in the sheetrock and the lighting problems. Yeah, zoom in right there. No, we're not going to show that. That's a lot of damage. We'll fix it later. It's okay. It's character. It is character. So for all you listeners, uh, no difference. What episode exactly are we on? The same. This is actually episode, I think, 52. Ooh, we've not even broken 100 yet? No, not yet. Uh, we, will, we will break 100 one day in, what, 40 years? And we have to get Bubble Man. Bubble Man will be here. That's right. In person. At the Kyoto restaurant. We will go to Kyoto. Kyoto's. I thought it was Osaka. So we, we, had to go Osaka. To, we had to go to Osaka with Bubble Man yeah. and Badlands. Badlands. No. Now listen, I think Badlands isn't is an honest get. I, I think so. I think we could get Badlands, Badlands as a guest on the podcast. Definite possibility. We should at least try. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's no harm in trying. I'm waiting until we have at least 200 subscribers or whatever. So like 200 people listen to us. You, you know? know, we only have like 11. Isn't it great? Yeah. And we've been doing this for like a year? Over a year. Really? Yeah, we've 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 gotten well. We've only better. started YouTube as of a few months ago. That's but. true. Well, Clay, you were very excited about your topic. Yeah. What do you got? I got something pretty sweet. How sweet? Oh, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> Ever heard of this thing called candy? I am aware yes! of candy. I have heard of this. Is this the thing that doctors give you to get, make you come back to their office? Yep, it's the thing that dentists hand out on Halloween to make sure you get cavities that they can fill. Business. All Is right. it like drugs? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm in. All right, so, you know, candy, it's actually a pretty new concept when you think about it. Hmm. How? Yeah. Well, what movie is about candy? Um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Exactly. <clears throat> I was going to say <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph, but okay. Right. There was candy in that, but it wasn't about, yeah. about It was candy. not primarily. It was yeah. pretty much all candy. Yeah, but with Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, you know, what's that last word there? Factory. Factory. Big industry. Manufacturing. That's not, that's not old stuff, necessarily. Okay. It's like new stuff. Yeah, but what about like Grandma's making sweets. Yeah, I feel like that date dates back pretty far. Yeah, it does. But uh, although we've always liked sweet treats, uh, sugar is just always was always too expensive because you didn't have the manufacturing capabilities to produce it in mass. So it had to be produced all by hand, and that made it very expensive. So it could only be afforded by the uber rich, or on the holidays. So mm. you would have a cake on your birthday, at your wedding. You'd eat some pies during like Christmas or Thanksgiving. So like uh, in, in that movie, the Western um, Open Range, at the end they buy the chocolate. Oh, and yeah. That, and that, and that, that I remember like, that. That was like a big deal. Yeah, because yeah. it's just so rare. Yeah, that so was expensive. cool. Yeah, so instead, sweet treats they ate would be things like Molasses, mm. ah. honey. All right, I like honey. And then nuts and sugar plums were considered all sweet treats. Well, well, that, make, that makes sense. Uh, it's like a naturally sweet thing. A good roasted peanut is yeah. pretty good. I've never had a sugar plum. I have some. You brought sugar plums? Whoa! But no, I don't have sugar plums. Oh, but I know what what it is. Okay. It, it's basically seeds stuck together with fig juice. That's it, into a ball. It's just a seed ball. So I do have some seeds. Okay. Here. And I have some peanuts. I have some peanuts in here somewhere. There they Hold are. up. Clay, what are you doing? What is this? He what? said he said candy. And you I said candy. candy. I'm saying seeds and peanuts. This is candy back then. This was their sweet treats. Okay. So Delicious I want you guys sweet treats. Now... They did not have planters peanuts back in the day. They had they had peanuts. Those okay. almonds. Those are almonds even. I don't know. I was just buying nuts. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I was a child, I used to hate almonds. As an adult, I don't mind almonds. Do you have to take them together? I just grabbed yeah. a handful of them. 
everything. Yeah, mix them like a sugar no, plum. Like, <laughs> like here. Did you want me to take the plate? Yes, take all of it. All right. No, just uh, just take some nuts and things. All right. Josh is not that hard. Josh, eat it. Just grab. Watch some. you eat it. All right. I'll just. I accidentally it. switched the camera while I ate it. <laughs> okay, so I have I have my seeds, yep. and I, I feel have like a bird. some nuts. So this this is a canonically correct sugar plum. Wow, thanks, nice. Dad, for getting yeah. us some sweet treats. Wow, sugar plum. I'm so ah. glad I worked in the field for eight hours. Oh. Yeah, but it was like even in like that Christmas carol thing, right? Night before Christmas, like they slept wondering what St. Nick would, what gifts he would bring them while plums. sugar plums, tales of sugar plums danced in their dream. Oh, yeah, it was what he would bring, tales of sugar plums, plums danced in their dreams. So they wow. were dreaming about this. Mm. They well, eating dreaming. that, that was very satisfying. I like that though. So, yeah. but you, I wouldn't consider that candy. Did you feel satisfied eating that, Max? Yeah. I made me. I like it. Very my happy. hunger went away a little bit. Yeah, isn't that nice. That was like in the 1800s, though. But industry made refining sugar a cheaper and quicker process, and they also invented this cool new thing. It's called corn syrup. Oh, all right. They put it in everything now. Everything. Does a corn syrup come from corn? Like really? Yeah. I think you need like a special type of corn, maybe. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, but is corn even real? Why is it so bad for us? Because it's, it's not real. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's been it's been made. So I guess like is it like chemical cornstarch versus not cornstarch, corn syrup versus real actual corn syrup? What is a corn? I think what is corn? Yeah, I'm I, I'm saying for mass mass producing things, corn syrup. They call it corn syrup, but really it's like a chemical approximation of it that's cheaper to make. Like artificial sugars. Right, but my point is corn is, like, the vegetable corn is, mo- it's modified. It's, they made it. It's not, like, a natural I guess vegetable. so, yeah. I think it's just that there's too much corn syrup in everything. Yeah. And I think our body processes it differently some way. Mm. It's just bad at processing it. Yeah. It should, it should just get better. The body's like, I'm so tired. And he looks at the assembly room. It's this gigantic, just sludge, just rolling in. Not more of it. Yeah. So, by comparison, in the 1850s, the candy industry was worth three million dollars. Hey, it's popular. Then, in the 1950s, a hundred years later, it was worth one billion. And today, oh. 2021, it was 15.6 billion. Hey. And it's expected to keep growing by over five percent year over year. So we're going to die someday. Yes. <laughs> we're all going to. People are eating too much candy. I believe it. And some of the candies that were first made were made out of normal treats that were not considered a sweet treat, but were still a treat. Right. You had peppermint. Yeah. You had cinnamon. Yeah. You had clove and aniseed. Okay. Aniseed. I get You ever you had aniseed? The anti-seed. <laughs> You I've plant never this had in the ground, the earth will dissolve. Yeah. Anyway, oh, Clay's got some. I got some peppermints. Ooh. I got peppermints. Lifesavers. Uh, also, candy corn. That was an early treat. I love candy corn. I actually really like candy corn. I and love some candy cinnamon. Corn. Hot tamale. Hot tamale. Yes. That's all they had of cinnamon. Really? Yeah, they didn't have anything else. Check yeah. it out, man. Boom. Now, also, I bought this, so you have to eat it. I'll, yeah, right. I will eat some. Yeah, we I hate will. peppermints. You hate why? peppermints? I hate peppermints. What's wrong with you? I don't know why. I, I Were you do dropped not... on your head as a baby? I was, actually. My mother dropped me in the parking lot. I doubt that. I think she was changing Ooh, my I diaper. Hate, I, I doubt that. I hate peppermint that. because it makes you feel cold, like in your it mouth. makes you feel cold? I'll, oh, yeah. I'll still try some. You can hand me one this way. I'll still mm. eat one. You know what? Wow. These are way softer than I remember. <laughs> I've never actually eaten a hot tamale. What? I've what? never actually done it because... Are you lying right now? I'm not lying. So whenever dad like got these, like, oh, they're so spicy and hot. When I was a kid, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I don't want any of that. No. So I never tried it. So I'm going to try a hot tamale for the first time ever. No. Are you I've serious? Always, I've always assumed they were gross. No. You're lying. No, no, I'm not lying. I've never had one. This is a unique fact. This is my first hot tamale. Don't like the smell. It smells like cinnamon. Don't like the smell. It's good. 
So? It's just a spicy Mike and Ike. Pretty much. Reminds me of like brushing my teeth. <laughs> kind of. You brush your teeth with cinnamon? I had cinnamon toothpaste for a while. Oh, yeah. So, Clay, you brought all this to us to eat and enjoy as yeah. you tell us it's going to kill us. Yes. You see, candy is secretly built by uh, alien ghosts. Mm. Alien ghosts? Ghost aliens. How does that work? Are these original ghost aliens mm. or astral projections of astral projections of ghost aliens? Oh, I well, love tamales. See, they were ghosts, but they went to space and became aliens. I really, really like these these uh, corn thingies. What are they yeah. called? Candy uh, corn. Candy, candy corn. But then, of course, oh yeah, I should mention, I didn't. I couldn't find any clove. Mm-hmm. But if you want to know what that tastes like, uh, pumpkin pie is generally flavorless, so they add in clove and cinnamon. Oh, I didn't know that. So that yeah. creates the pumpkin pie that. flavor. Mm-hmm. I and like pumpkins just taste like that when you pumpkin got spice. pumpkins yeah. hot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a second hot tamale. Yeah. I love tamales. Uh, uh, and for the aniseed, they, they sold it. It was very popular, very common s- snack. And then people just stopped eating it because they had candy and stuff now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So then people were like, aniseed, what's that? And then the guy's like, uh, it's uh, black licorice. No. Yeah. I love black. That's my favorite candy like it. out of all. Black licorice. It's a weird thing, too, because people love it or hate it. It's, it's, it's my top. If I had all the choices of candy in front of me, every variety, I would go yeah. black licorice. Now, to clarify for our audience, because... Most of you are going, what? You've never had true black licorice. Yep. You've only had like the fake stuff. Yep. If you go to Tractor Supply, yes. you <laughs> get the yeah, you get the the true hundred percent black licorice made in Australia. Australia in a little bag, you will have such an awakening. It is so good. I even like the Twizzlers, black licorice. I never like the Twizzlers because they're fake. I like everything black licorice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's I like that kind of feeling. Like you eat a bunch of it, then like it, it opens up all your pores. Yeah, you're just yeah. like whoa. And you go. I feel like I, I learned the whole world, and it's all tastes like licorice. But as time went on, uh, a lot of these candies obviously fell out of favor. Favor of fruit flavors. Ah, ah. I see. Taste the rainbow. Taste One the rainbow time for my birthday. Become the rainbow. I took all my birthday money and I bought just Skittles. <laughs> And then I bought a Lego set. So I was building this giant Lego set with this giant thing of Skittles. And I had eaten like half the bag. Yeah, did I've gotten act- sick off of Skittles one time. Did you accidentally eat a Lego? No. But like it makes your spit hurt. And then <laughs> there's these nerds that I bought. Big nerds. My goodness. But those huh. are for me. For okay. later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had some. Nerds uh, are good. Hang on. So that was just a bag of nerds. Yeah. Are they individual boxes of them inside or is it just an open bag of nerds? It's just an open bag. It's like big, big nerds. So. I've never seen nerds like that in my life. Can you I've show that off? My box. No. I don't want one. I, I want to see it. Well, I don't want one. I just, I want to look at it. You say it's like chewy. It's like soft. Hmm. Big chewy. Oh, man. Yes. What in the world? How much are those? Uh, I have no idea. I'm going to buy some. I want uh, those. I might have a receipt. Well... I don't have a receipt. I, no, so no, far, no. this is my favorite topic you have done, Clay. Ever. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right. yeah I had those on on a Sunday. I went to the big main event place with my uncle. Oh, yeah. Mm. It was a big place with, uh, they got pool, laser tag, bowling, beer. All right. Beer. Nice. So you're saying you live high life. Oh, yeah. Do you guys want any more of these candy corns? I'll just, I'll yeah. eat them all if you don't take them. All right, I, take, I love candy, candy corns. corns. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, I should mention I got this video idea from JJ. I think his name's McCullough. McCullough. He's a YouTuber. I should mention him because he's, he's real small fry. He's only got right. like, like what, like six, 600,000 subscribers? Never heard of him. Come on. Never heard of yeah, him. Yeah, you know, he's he, not big like Tan Pants is. So no, we no, we no. got to, yeah, we got to, what's the, step up step? your game, JJ. Yeah, step it up, man. He's not like, He's not even as big as Colin Furs. Yeah, Colin Furs made a freaking tunnel. Yeah. What's he done? I can tunnel. Crazy. But people watch people do stuff. There was this one time. There was this one time. I, I, was, on a, I was on a house. And I f- jumped off. <laughs> what? That was Max's topic. 
amazing. My topic today is interesting. It's kind of short, but something that kind of blew my mind. I was like, whoa, that makes total sense. So um, I'm going to be talking about a guy named Tony Iomi. Um, somebody who's listening to this podcast that really knows music is probably like, oh, yeah. It's the guy. It's the uh, the co-founder and the guitarist, the leader of the band Black Sabbath. Oh. So we're talking heavy metal, all right? Hey, hey. African-American Sabbath. <laughs> That was funny, Clay. That, that was, funny. was good, Clay. Chris Rock should tell that joke. <laughs> yeah. So he's a he's a British uh, guitarist, and uh, early on in his career of music, he played he played more like finger style, like classical music, classical guitar. I mean, he was really talented. He had a band back then. He and his buddies were gonna were gonna actually start making music. And he was working a job in town at this metal factory. And uh, anyways, he told his boss, hey, I'm going to quit my job. I'm giving you like a week's notice or two weeks notice or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pursue my, pursue my um, passion for music. His boss is like, oh, yeah, cool. You're really talented, whatever. You know, I, I wish you the best. Anyways, um, his last day at his job, he is working this ginormous um steel press he's like heating up hot hot things of steel throwing them in getting these these flat plates and uh he gets his fingers caught in it and they smash his fingers and so tony's like devastated he's like i i planned this all out i'm a really good guitarist and now i i can't play music because uh on his right hand his middle finger and his ring finger were the tips of them were smashed or cut like cut off almost. Mm. Wow. Um, they're like just super. I mean, is it, think about all that weight just smashing cut on off them by smashing. Yeah. This was painful. Yeah. Out. Yeah. I saw a picture. It didn't look like severed, severed. It was just, it just, they just looked deformed. Like Bugs Bunny dropped a hammer on his hand. Kind of. Sure. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so he's de- devastated. He's like, I'll never play music again. And then he was talking to one of his buddies, and he's like, hey, man, you can still play music. I think you can still do it. We're just going to call ourselves Black Sabbath. It'll work. He's like, oh, maybe I could just relearn the guitar all over again because now I have this deformity on his hand. And uh, so he, he glued these little things on his fingers, and he's trying to trying to press the strings. And he's he's left-handed, so he would play with his right hand. Mm. Right, I'm I'm right-handed, so I play with my left hand. He smashed his right hand. Anyways, um, he's taping these things on his fingers, but he can't really press the strings because it hurts. doesn't feel quite right. So he tunes his guitar down. He's like, oh, I can press them a little bit easier now. And he's like, I can't do all these complicated chord progressions or these chord formations with my fingers, so I'm going to go a little bit more simple block Hmm. stuff. And then it actually sounded completely different than what everybody else was used to. And so it, it it started sounding like rock and roll, like like heavy metal, like down tuned, you know, just simple chords and mainly playing power chords. So then he was like, "This is cool. I'm just gonna roll with this." And uh, then he formed the band Black Sabbath, and they they just started playing heavy metal rock and roll, and that that's what created heavy metal. Wow, because of the heavy metal, because of the heavy oh, metal. Man. Oh. That's deep. So I heard that, and I was like, wait a minute. This makes sense. <laughs> this is really cool. So um, future artists out there yeah, trying to find the new sound. Embrace Go to a steel press. Pick a random part of your hand or arm and crush it. And then learn how to play again. You'll be unique and different and maybe Black Sabbath. Yep. Yep. I don't think that's very good or advice. You could just become White Weekday. <laughs> white Weekday. It's like that meme where uh, that wrestler guy's like, <gasps> looks behind him. 
a Black Sabbath when White Weekday walks in. <gasps> yeah, so that's what did it. His his fingers not being able to play right. He just went simple power chords, tuned his guitar down because it felt better on his fingers. There you go. Heavy metal was born. Hmm. It's a simple formula. Yeah. Imitation equals creativity. There you go. That was Tony Iommi. That's why the big blockbuster movies all stink. Yeah, because they have too many resources. They have no limitations. They, they have no. They yeah, they, they they don't have any finger smashing moments. Yeah, yeah. that's what we got to do. Smash <laughs> their fingers. Smash their dang fingers. When Michael Bay. Jo- when George Lucas was making Star Wars, he had nothing but limitations. Like, yeah. you can't do this. How do we make it look close to? And then he, he had to invent things. So if you're really, if you're really thinking about how to solve a certain problem, just get a hammer and just start smacking your hand. <laughs> Trust me, it'll work. Or just um, <laughs> just think outside the box. Yeah. Or find the box, set it on fire, mm-hmm. use the ash to fertilize some land. And then drink the land. Mm. Yes. Sure. Sure. Just become a farmer. Give up on your dreams. <laughs> become become a, farmer. a farmer. Become a farmer. What is the fastest swimming ocean fish? Clocked in at over 60 miles per hour. Is it tuna? I think tuna fast. is ginormous. It is. But it's not fast. But, but like, it, it fights so hard that they're like, oh, yeah, if you let it fight too much, it'll literally burn itself up inside. What? Like, it cooks the meat inside Whoa. of it if it fights too much. That's how. I think Clay's right. He beat you. cool. Wow. The answer is selfish or marlin. What? Oh, uh, marlin. Oh, marlin. Uh. Big old fast Marlin. Marlin John Johnsonson. John Jacob Smeaker Butt. Uh, Joshua. Yeah. Two out of three adults in the USA suffer from what? Amnesia. No. Think harder, Josh. Diarrhea. <laughs> That's probably true. No. Fast guess. They're dyslexic. They suffer from piles. <laughs> What? <laughs> What's a pile? You can use that in a sentence, Isaac. <laughs> like piles of something? Capital P. <laughs> piles. Wait, look it up. It might be an actual disease. Close, look it up. I'm looking <laughs> so it up. Make sure okay, so what like is it? One in two and three? Two out of three adults suffer from piles. So one of us in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, because no. there are four of us. It's higher. It's another term for hemorrhoids. <laughs> oh, oh boy, hemorrhoids. Does any of us have hemorrhoids? No, no. I'm good. Well, that's, then that's false. Although it's two out of three adults. That's that like an old man problem, though. To. Well, I have I, I have plans. Don't worry, I'm gonna get some eventually. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Piles, piles. Man, okay. Um, <laughs> Maxwell. I'm imagining that one person listening to the show, Vin, he said, piles. He goes, oh, hemorrhoids. Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> These kids know what that is. Um, in Atlanta, Georgia, it's illegal to do what to a giraffe? Mm, I can't imagine there'd be too many giraffes in Georgia. And they had to make a law. This happened too many times. You can't do this to <laughs> giraffes anymore here, guys. In Atlanta, in Georgia. Fact, city... In Anything. the city of Atlanta, in the state of Georgia, this has happened twice. We're making a law. You can't do this to drafts anymore. Huh. Murder. I'm going to say spit on because I just, I would spit on a draft. That's the only thing I would, that'd be the only way I could touch a draft because they're so tall and far that's, away. You have to go in for the ranged attack. I mean, you could say pee on, but that's kind of gross and nobody, yeah. would, nobody would do that. If you got close enough to pee on a draft and did it, the draft <laughs> would kill you. Probably you would, you'd be dead. Who would want? Who would want to do that? So I'd say, I think I'd say spit on. Okay. The answer is tied to a telephone pole. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, obviously, that was my next guess. I bet it was the same guy who did it more than once. <laughs> it was the same guy twice. We Gavin. told you. We told you. Gavin, is this is this why I have no power right now? <laughs> Where else am I going to tie it up? The only thing high enough. Right. <laughs> uh, Clay, the um, Japanese believed earthquakes were caused by an underground what? Like a worm? A big worm? That's close. 
but it's wrong. Oh. They believed it was caused by a giant underground spider. Ooh. Seriously? Mm-hmm. I That's mean, creepy. who's to say it's not? Yeah, I've never been down there when earthquake happened. Have you ever Japan. seen down it down there? Those those miners yeah. in Chile went down there. They almost didn't come back. Because the spiders. Spiders. <laughs> spiders. Joshua. Yeah. In Florida, <laughs> women can be fined for falling asleep under what? Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's everyone. Honey, I told you not to take your nap under the bridge. Lucille, if you can take another nap under that bridge, I'm going to fine you. <laughs> that's it. That's true. No, the answer is hair dryer. Wait, Wait what? Sleep under a hair dryer? You can't fall asleep under a hair dryer. So, like, you could huh. fall asleep, put a hair dryer on your head? I imagine this is 60s or 50s when they had those big things. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they should be sitting there like this. They're sitting in the chair. A at couple the of them, which you go. They're right. sitting at the chair at that's the salon. They put that that's helmet safe. on them. Their hair catching on fire—that's bad. It probably a good sound too. It probably it would probably put you to sleep. Warm, mm-hmm. sounds like white noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be nice until your head catches on fire. <laughs> well, I would hope like the the what would you call them the salon s? I don't know. Beautician. Yeah, would be like, hey, wake up! <laughs> You're on fire. Hey, right, wait a minute! <laughs> you weren't strawberry blonde before. You are now. Okay, Maxwell. Yeah. In 19th century Florence, it was illegal for a woman to wear what? More laws against women. Man, what's wrong with these 60s people, 19th century people? Soon, they'll have the right to vote. Well, yeah. man, who knows what's going to happen next? You know what? You know how horrible that would be if women could vote? Man, Hillary Clinton might I mean, do something. I couldn't even imagine. What was, what was illegal, Maxwell? <laughs> what was illegal for them to wear? I'm going to say a tie. Enters buttons. What? Why? I don't know. Isn't that like an... What else did they have other than buttons? And floors are like, you know what? <clears throat> you can't wear think... buttons anymore. <laughs> Wait, did it give a year? Yeah, 19th century Florence. What, what did they have? A zipper? I guess they... Lace, self-lacing shoes? Maybe they just... They were so so advanced. Yeah. <laughs> zip ties. What do you use zip ties and uh, zippers and elastic uh, clamps, clasps, he buckles? Says, I can't believe you're wearing buttons. <laughs> you're wearing a button. Only men can wear buttons. I expect you to wear a whole Look door how hinge. This looks all these <laughs> buttons. That's pretty ridiculous. Florence, huh? Okay, Clyde. Mm-hmm. What do what do uh? Newologist study. What? Newologist. Spell it. N O O L O G I S T S. Newologist. Hmm. I'm thinking some type of uh, bacteria. Hmm. You're on to something. You're on a trail there. It's probably not the right one, <laughs> but it's a trail. Because I know, like, uh, for worms, it's like, like their genus or something is called like oligo. Oligo. Hmm. I know that because I had a science teacher. He he was the oligo guy for his screen name. The worm guy. That's weird. Yeah. Got it already. I got it. It's the scientific branch of studying Gabe Newell. Newellology. That's it. That's it. Uh, I'll go with the bacteria. Okay. Josh is right. It was the study of Gabe Whoa. Newell. No. Oh. Yeah. The study of the mind. Oh. Neurology. You know Neurology. when people say use your noodle? <laughs> that's Neurology. What, that's what they mean. That's where it came from. Man, I was thinking it was my elbow this whole time. Okay, Josh, this is your last question. Okay. What does SOS stand for? Save our ship or soul. Save our soul? You want to take a guess at it, Clay? What is it, Josh? Send out search. I thought it was save our ship. The answer mm. is nothing. What? what? It doesn't mean anything. That's not what true. The? That's not true. I'm looking it at it. It says up. nothing, and then a dash, and then not in capital letters, save our souls. What? It's just uh, apparently just a flash, according to this document, which I don't trust 100%. I don't believe it. Okay, one last one. Max, in New York, it's illegal to shoot what from a moving trolley car? 
what do you regular sh- regularly shoot in New York? From a from moving, trolley cars. From a moving trolley car. I'm thinking like trends. What it's, would be it, a it, good trend? It's been a while since there been a trolley car in New York. That's right. Spitballs. Answers rabbits. What? What? Rabbits? <laughs> the okay, yeah. rabbit. Where the freak are you going to find a, a rabbit in New car. York City? <laughs> it's Wait. New York, not New York City. What was the oh. question? It's illegal to shoot what in New York from a trolley car? Why a trolley car? <laughs> it says specifically a trolley car. A moving not, trolley car. Uh, so if it's not moving, maybe you can. Hey. So it's not sharks again, right? It's not sharks, no. <laughs> <laughs> Save our sharks. Right. Everyone... Thank you for playing. Who wants to have a budget with two digits in it? Thank you for playing. Mm-hmm. That was a good time, y'all. Who won? Uh, I think that we're all winners. You're all winners, yeah. Uh, Clay did pretty good, I thought. Rewind the tape. Rewind the tape. I want to see that again. I don't. Okay, think guys. So. I'm going to talk human history. I'm going to go beyond candy. Who makes the candy? Who thinks of the candy? Who gets the pipeline ready and the production schedule to make the candy? Gerbils. The answer is not gerbils. The answer... Alpha Draconians. Freaking yeah. Frank Oz. Frank Oz is behind the desk. He doesn't voice Miss Piggy anymore, but deep down inside, he really wants to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um... No, I'm talking. Toby McGuire. I'm, I'm talking people. People, man. Toby McGuire is a person. What are you saying? TM, TMs, my my man. Good old TM coming to town. That's right. No, so for years, whenever a, gr- a group of people come together to work, that building they're in is called an office. An office. I win. You win. <laughs> and for years, offices were built um, in one way. Remember in that one movie. Um, it was in The Greatest Showman. Remember The Great... You didn't see it. Did you no, see... I didn't. Who saw Greatest Showman? You saw it. I did. Remember in the beginning of the movie, he's in that office, and it's just desk, 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 yes. desk. That's how all offices work. Back in 1967, two guys wanted to revolutionize how offices worked, because up till then, that's how they were. So the guy, this guy, Robert Propst and Herman Miller, they looked at the way people were situated... And they proposed that even though there's an open environment and everyone's together, people talk to each other almost, almost, people almost never talk to each other, communication is bad, and there's no privacy. People are never comfortable. So they proposed finding a way to make sure everyone in the office feels like they have their own space where they can have their own stuff and have some privacy. Remote work. Remote work. And they found out, it wasn't remote work. They found out that when they did this, people actually communicated more and got things done faster. Wait, how? By secluding them? By had, by giving them their own space that they could say is theirs. Oh. That make sense. Before, everyone's desk was exactly the same in a row. And you were sitting like this the entire time. People were watching you. And you had to do your work. And people mm-hmm. rarely moved from their spot. They, their posture was really bad. They had... Back pains and... Like Europe. Just like Europe. That's the difference between Europe and America. Yeah, like Europe office is bad. American office, good. Yeah. So uh, here is what they called... So the action office. So this was the first uh, version of it. You had a desk, a desk, and like a bookshelf. I and Everyone see. had their own little area. So this is the uh, proto-cubicle. It was just a couple of walls. Yeah, and when they installed these in places, productivity skyrocketed. Okay. Because people, you know, they had their own space, and they were able to work faster, and they had some privacy. Mm-hmm. So that was the action office. Then, sales weren't very good for the first one. Even though it did help a lot of places, they weren't able to sell very much. So they tried to uh, do it again. They went back to the drawing board, and they made the action office, too. And the action office, too... Um, The action, Office 2, coming to an office near you. So he wanted a a system where uh, every single business and place could customize it however they want. Basically, they'd give you a couple of walls, a couple of desks, and they would fit together, and you could arrange them however you wanted to be. 
Okay. So uh, he wanted to allow the employee a degree of privacy and the ability to personalize their work environment without impacting the environment of the works around them. He recognized that people are more productive within a territorial enclave that they can personalize, but they also require vistas outside their space. His concept was the backup, a two- or three-sided vertical division that defined territory and afforded privacy without hindering the ability to view or participate in happenings outside the space. A hmm. cubicle. Oh, yeah. like, like in The Office, the other episode where like Angela wanted the picture of, of babies playing poker or whatever. No, like, cats playing poker, right? No, babies playing on, on these trumpets. And then uh, Oscar was like, I hate it. it it's, it's terrible. And Michael's <laughs> solution was, okay, you wear the poster as a shirt so That's she right. can look at it and you can't see it. That's right. <laughs> he That's had to wear fine. it in his, in his ID photo. Genius. Yeah. So this avoids that. It does avoid it completely. So after they uh, released these two versions of office spaces, it revolutionized how everyone did offices. Right. Everyone started doing it. They won awards. Mm. They won like um, the best design of the last 50 years in like 1990 something. Wow. Right? Yeah. So they wow. <laughs> some design group got together. What's the best design thing the last 50 years? And they said it was the cubicle. So they award these guys the award for it. But um, today, uh, one of the guys who, I think George Nelson, uh, he disowned himself from the action office line uh, in 1970 uh, because his idea for uh, giving everyone their own space, uh, companies are like, hey, so a, co- a complaint only needs this much space to work in. Let's see how many employees we can fit in this space. Oh, wow. So they started packing people in like sardines. So look at this uh, layout plan. Oops. This is a floor plan showing repetitive, resegmented cubicles. Wow. So I'll show it to Clay so he can see. Look at that floor plan. Oh, my. Wow. I can't really make sense of it, though. Yeah. It, 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 that it looks like it'd be like from a movie where it's like really. The Matrix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like so, the beginning uh, of Tron. The beginning of Tron or The Matrix. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he said that. Uh, the people using cubicles to dehumanize the work environment. He said, one does not have to be an especially perceptive critic to realize that the action office is definitely not a system which produces an environment gratifying for people in general. Yeah, I saw today. a photo of like a, an open office layout. I think it was like from China or somewhere. Mm-hmm. It was nightmarish. So uh, Herman Miller is the company that first started this. And Herman Miller is still active today. And you can still get an open office, uh, an action office from them. Nice. And now the things they sell look like this. Whoa. A little bit nicer. Okay. Yeah. Looks like Ikea. So when, uh, when apparently the science or psychology is when people have their own space and people have privacy, they're comfortable. And when people are comfortable, they're happy. And when people are comfortable and happy, they work a little bit better than normal. The action office furnishings have appeared in many films released in the last 30 years. The first film to feature the action office product was in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. In the film, a white action office one roll-top desk is used in the space station reception area. Do they have a, a chair that specifically Bill Gates can jump? <laughs> you think Bill Gates can? Is he good at jumping or he can't jump? No. He can jump? A chair that... <laughs> He can specifically jump. So just Bill Gates. Like jump over. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't have, you not, have you not seen, seen that video? video? Is it true that you can leap over a chair from a standing position? It depends on the size of the chair. Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes! It's the best video ever. He jumps the chair. No way. Bill Gates yeah. jumps it? Yeah, yeah. he jumps it. It chair. was so awkward. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I heard you can jump a chair. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I can do that. I can <laughs> do that. Yeah, sure, yeah. And then he jumps <laughs> it. Paralyzed man communicates, communicates first words and months using a brain implant. You know what he says? He says, I want a beer. <laughs> True, man. Mm. Mm. Was he white? Uh, the picture is white. Of course he was white. If the picture's white, 
He's probably white. What else would a white man say? Uh, he would say, my coming socks, out of a coma. My socks need to get pulled up. I found a, a Twitter uh, user or page, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, that posts kind of like Wikipedia out of context. And All there's right. some fun Wikipedia stuff in there. Okay. So for once, I have a not news topic. Waffle Day, Swedish, Vadef Gaiden, or something. I'm butchering <laughs> that. I'm just reading it from the, just the way it's spelt out. Vaefel Dagen. Vaefel Dagen. Vaefel Dagen. Vaefel Dagen. What does that mean? Waffle Day. <laughs> what do you do for Waffle Day? We shoot horses. <laughs> <laughs> it is a tradition that is celebrated in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark on March 25th. Wait, that was a few days ago. Like three countries? Whoa. Yes. Wait. Three days ago. We, we missed we Waffle Day? Day? We missed Waffle Day. I can't believe it. I, I'll never recover. I'm going to be this unhappy for the rest of my life. Guys, Tan Pan. At least until next Waffle Day. <gasps> Tan Pan celebrates do. Waffle Day with Norway, Denmark, and the other one. Yeah. What, was the other what are one? the Denmark, qualifications? Sweden. Denmark, Sweden, and what? Denmark, Norway. Norway. Oh, Norway. Norway. Yeah. Norway. On March 25th, Malta Day, which is also known as the Feast of Annunciation, upon which waffles are typically eaten. Welcome to the Feast of Annunciation, <laughs> when waffles are eaten. No. Here is a list of people who have lived in airports. Hey. Yeah. So, hang on. I hang saw on. a movie about this one. one. We, Wikipedia tables. We need to define lived. So, this is like... You received a, a bill there. I think lived. You had mail delivered to you in the airport. No, no, no. Or maybe like lived, like they had an experience. They're like, finally, I have lived. I know what living in a place is like. What you have to brush your teeth in that place. No, because you could brush brush your teeth in a bus. Then you live there, <laughs> technically. <laughs> if you're brushing let your let teeth me, somewhere, through the data table. Out of the library. I live here. Wait, in the if Martian. you're your, if you're brushing your teeth somewhere, you live there. In the Martian, they said to be a, a a colonizer or settler, you have to plant something there. So if you plant something, oh, you've colonized the airport. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Let me go through the data colonizer. table okay. right now. There's only one row in the data table. Name Wei Jiangyo. He Wei lived in Jiangyo. an airport. Original nationality Chinese. Location. Beijing Capital International Airport. Yep. Period. Uh, 2008, present day. What? Uh, according Since to 2008, he's still in... This Wikipedia in... article, that's what it says here. Take that as like, you will. Legally, or is he just like hiding? Duration, like 5,195 days, approximately 14 years. Exact dates unknown. Reason for stay? Wanted to smoke, drink without his family bothering him. <laughs> difficulty finding work. <laughs> I just wanted to do smoke drink without my family and my wife about his bothering. <laughs> He's like, I want to smoke. I want to drink. And the family's like, Dad, play ball. I want to smoke a drink. <laughs> I'm going to the airport. <laughs> reason for leaving. Still lives in the airport, but comes out occasionally. That's a reason for leaving? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, he's like, like okay, I'll okay. attend your graduation. And he Fine. leaves occasionally. And then he comes back. So you would, on your wedding day. Where do you live? The airport. <laughs> I leave occasionally. <laughs> I smoke and drink there. <laughs> this is my favorite, my favorite thing here. Bee removal. All right. Bee removal is the process of removing bees from a location. But sometimes bees can <laughs> over inhabit one location. <laughs> What's that? That's a bee. It needs to be removed. Okay, Let's here's call another, here's the <laughs> bee removers. Here's another one. Horse theft. <coughs> horse theft is the crime of stealing horses. Wait, well, what, what was bee removal for? What is it? <laughs> the art of removing bees from a location. The art. Well, yeah. I know, but why are you reading bee removal? Because it's Wikipedia out of context. Oh, this is out of context. With crab people. meat. Hmm. Crab meat or crab meat, one word. <laughs> It's the meat found within a crab. Hey. It's I'm, also one in my dog. <laughs> crab meat. <laughs> All right. All right, Josh, give us a juicy one. List of unusual deaths. Okay, I'm ready for this. I, I could probably guess three. 
Give give us two of them. Oh, there's only one. Oh, there's just one? What? It said list. Oh, it's a screenshot. Oh, okay. It said list. Yeah. Parvat Gala Barla. 16th of July, 2019. Parvat 60 from Gujarat, India. Bit a snake after the snake had bitten him. Both he and the snake died. <laughs> nice. Had a boy. Yeah. Good job. Way to stick it to him. And maybe like he like fell down and the snake was there and it was attacking him. He's like, okay, attack <laughs> back. So he bites the. I think the snake bit him and he grabbed it and bit it. Maybe. That's I what I think he was known for that. Maybe. He's don't fight him. He bites you. I wouldn't want to fight somebody who bites. Mm-mm. Please subscribe for more tan pants and be notified when tan pants happens. Yeah, and thanks to our legendary guild, Strong Keyless, Naven Jr., and The Big Time, and I think that's all of them. And if you want to be legendary like they are, there's a Patreon where you can be that. You just now switch? Yeah. <laughs> I was pointing and... I'm sorry. Fine, whatever. You can join the Patreon and be amazing as well. Mm. That is all. Bye. Wait. We can say something? I don't want to cut it right as Max says, what? <laughs> <laughs>